Ah, uh, yes. Crunk core. Undoubtedly one of the most polarizing and infamous subgenres of the late 2000s, Warp Tour Wave. In a nutshell, this was scene kid party music, essentially. It's quite literally what it sounds like by the name, Crunk Core. It's like Little John and the East Side Boys crunk beats with auto-tuned T-Pain choruses. And of course, it's most polarizing element, hardcore screaming over it as well. Screamo. Get crunk. Get crunk. Get crunk. Crunk plus hardcore equals crunk core. Probably the worst and also simultaneously the greatest music genre that has ever existed. <laughs> it's a fun genre which wears its goofy ridiculousness on its sleeve and really only exists with the sole purpose for you to have a good time while listening to it. So. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that. What's with the what's with the yeah? There's like a what's with the haterade, man? There's what is with the haterade on Broken Dude, Side? I don't know. People it's just, just drink a lot of hate. Close-minded. I don't know. Like we're just we make music to have fun. I, I thought music was about having fun. You know. Yeah. What I mean? yeah. yeah. And we like so we don't care. Mean. Like I always say, Saturday show. We don't care about money, fame. We care about our fans most importantly, and for people to have fun at shows. Because I know all of us have bad days. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you go to a show, you go to have fun and get away from that. So that's what Broken Side tries to do. In today's world of crunk-leaning noise artists like 100 Gex or the Suicide Boys, the crunk core genre, which was pioneered in the late 2000s, doesn't really seem as crazy or as out of the ordinary of a music genre now. In fact, it's been said that the late 2010s emo SoundCloud rap era borrowed a lot from the aesthetic and the energy of crunk core. But back in 2008, and keep in mind, this was back when white suburbanites who liked rock and alternative music still unironically said things like, music is like candy, you throw away the rappers. Crunk core was relentlessly hated on, judged, and unaccepted by pretty much like 95% of the alternative music scene at the time. And the other 5% of people was like freaky, misfit little teenagers who embraced the genre uh, and were fans despite the obvious ridiculousness of the music. Anything you want to say to your haters? I don't care about haters. All right, thank yeah. you. Sweet. There were a handful of main power players in the original wave of crunk core, which started around 2008 or so. Artists like Dot Dot Curve, Jay Bigga, Blood on the Dance Floor, The Millionaires, and believe it or not, Jeffree Star was in the mix. But there was one group who was probably definitely the most notable out of the whole wave. This group was definitely the one act that was most synonymous with the crunk core genre itself and ultimately pioneered and pretty much created the freaking genre. The legendary group came out of New Mexico and their name was Broken Side. Hello. My name is The Cozy Representative, and today we're going to dive deep into the story of one of the most polarizing, hated on, uh, but on the flip side, surprisingly, one of the most revolutionary 2000s Warped Tour scene artists. Uh, welcome. This is the rise and fall of Broken Side. Let's go. But first of all, friends, before we get into it, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Give me, a, g show me a little love. Turn those notifications on so you know whenever I post things, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile and uh, help support my little YouTube dream, uh, consider uh, uh, supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon already. Huge, huge, huge thank you. You guys uh, make all the magic happen. Uh, on there, I post... Uh, bonus videos. I'm actually working on a video right now for the Patreon. Uh, it's a review of the new Asking Alexandria album. It should be done this week. It might even be done by the time I post this video. Uh, and there's also a way for me to do a video review of your band. If you're interested in, in things like that, you want me to get my eyes on it, uh, check that out in the link in the description if you're interested. Once again, thank you to everyone who supports me on there. And with that out of the way, let's get... Bree, bree. 
Bree Bree, my friends. Let's get into the story of Crunk Core Heroes Broken Side. Let's go. Bree Bree. <laughs> so, our scene core heroes, Broken Side, formed in the year 2006 by founding members Seven and Mickle. Uh, they were originally kind of more of a heavy, dark, like rap slash R&B project, with Seven being the rapper and Mickle being the singer. Uh, before long, they completed the Broken Side Posse by adding their friends Fat J and Ants to the mix. Yeah, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm Steven. <laughs> I'm Ants. What's up? I'm Fat J. And who's this? <laughs> this Baby J. Say hi. Hey. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. It was around this time that they decided to switch up their sound and striving to do something that nobody had really heard before musically, they added hardcore screaming screamo, if you will, over their already dark and emotional hip-hop. Mickle is, it's actually Michael, it's just spelled like Mickle, so, you know, I'll call him Michael, I'm sorry, that was a joke. Um, Michael stayed as their singer, clean vocalist, if you will, while Seven started rapping in a screamed vocal style, and Seven was actually a pretty good screamer, too. He had it down, he could have been in, like, a heavy metalcore band if he wanted to. <laughs> Fat J played keyboards, rapped, and did low growled screams, and Ants is the infamous member of Broken Side whose title in the band was Hype Man and Fog Machine Operator. Not kidding, he did some vocals too, but ultimately he did Hype and Fog Machine in Broken Side. How awesome is that? <laughs> they made a MySpace page, as most artists did at the time, to promote themselves, and they also put out their first release, a mixtape entitled The Broken, in the summer of 2007, which they recorded and released themselves. So it's pretty crazy, this release, The Broken, like I said, is a uh, very kind of dark, emotional hip-hop with screaming over it. Uh, there are goofy songs on here, like Schizophrenia, for example. But there's also tracks like Taking Life From Me, which has elements of like maybe a Linkin Park vibe or even some of uh, Eminem's darker tracks is the vibe going on here. Elements of the sound on this release that are also similar to freaky ravecore acts like Hollywood Undead or even Mindless Self Indulgence. But the emo acoustic guitar under it, plus the emotional screamed vocals throughout it, makes it sound like something you would find on SoundCloud in uh, like 2017, 10 years later. Uh, you know, it sounds like the Suicide Boys or countless of other SoundCloud emo rap artists who, uh, like I said, wouldn't exist <laughs> until a decade after Broken Side released The Broken in the summer of 2007. Pretty crazy looking back at it now. Honestly, even if you hate Broken Side or can't stand these songs, uh, they were onto something really creative and different here on The Broken. It ended up being a sound that was in a lot of ways very ahead of its time and I think it deserves some respect on its name man. So as I was saying Broken Side started building up an audience and spreading the word about their group through MySpace. Here's uh, actually what their MySpace looked like in the fall of 2007 right after the release of The Broken. So you know as you can see they weren't like huge by any means at this point but their, their numbers were going up, they were adding people as friends on the website and getting kids excited and playing local shows around the New Mexico area with intentions to try and start touring soon. Alright, so check this out, right? 2008 rolls in, and spoiler alert, 
2008 ended up being Broken Side's freaking year. <laughs> Get out of the way, haters. This is, this is their freaking year. So in early 08, Broken Side self-released two new releases. One was called The Scene Mixtape, uh, and the other <laughs> was an early version of the BC-13 EP. Now, these releases were put out on their MySpace at the time, presumably for free. At least, I'm guessing the mixtape definitely was for free. Uh, much like their first release, The Broken, both of these releases are pretty rare at this point in time. But after the band put out these two releases, this is when things really, really started blowing up for Broken Side online, almost unexpectedly for them. These new releases were a lot less emo than the broken and and these new songs saw broken side shifting way more into the party music category it was a lot more crunk there was a lot more screaming and it was way goofier now <laughs> Uh, the music was getting very goofy, but more than that, this was essentially the time when Broken Side officially kind of started pioneering their own genre, this genre of crunk screamo, better known to the world as crunkcore. It was born. It was born, and it came out of Broken Side in early 2008. So, whichever way you want to spin it, misfit teenagers on MySpace in 2008 quickly got hooked to Broken Side's revolutionary new sound. Uh, kids were flocking to their MySpace in droves. Broken Side were exploding and very quickly becoming somewhat of an internet phenomenon in the first half of 2008. Uh, to give you guys a gist of what I'm talking about, here's some screenshots from their MySpace page in July of 2008, just after things started going crazy for them. As you can see, suddenly they have literally 4 million profile views, almost 5 million. Uh, they've got 79,000 friends, the kids in the comment section are calling them hot and showing them tons of love. They started touring with other scene MySpace phenomenons like the millionaires. Uh, they had a management team over at the Artery Foundation. Hell, they even landed a sponsorship with freaking Lil Jon's Crunk Energy Drink. Now, legendary rapper Ice-T once infamously claimed on his first album, Rhyme Pays. And he wasn't lying, because who knew that four kids from New Mexico, four nobodies from New Mexico, could get absolutely poppin' on the internet and eventually the music scene simply by screaming over some crunk beats. Absolutely ridiculous, utter insanity in every sense of the word, but at the same time, super fucking awesome. I mean, come on. I, I haven't said this yet in this video, but just to clarify, I have always enjoyed Crunkcore. Whenever I say that in a video, like, a handful of people, like, flip a nut in the comments, but I have. I've always enjoyed it. I think it's, I think it's really funny. I think it's really fun. I found Broken Side uh, around this time in, like, 08 or 09, uh, back when I was, like, 12 years old, and I don't know, man. I always enjoyed it. Even when I was 12, listening to it, I was very aware of how ridiculous this music is, uh, and, and we're going to get into all the, the haters this band had in a moment, but I've always liked how much Broken Side pissed people off at the time, how much they bothered, like, older, jaded, pretentious punks in the scene. Something about that in itself was very punk rock to me, because Broken Side were just having a good time. They had no ulterior motive or, like, negative intentions besides just having fun, literally, and making music that was a little bit different, and the music scene at large at the time just could not handle that, and kind of still can't handle that, which is still very funny to me, but more on that later. So, Broken Side, around this time, uh, you know, summer 08, they were touring, blowing up online, sponsored by Crunk Energy Drink, that's Crunk with three exclamation points, by the way, that's the official spelling of Crunk Energy Drink. They got signed to a record label called Suburban Noise Records. Uh, now, if you're wondering who in the world would sign Broken Side to their label, Suburban Noise Records is actually a label founded by one of the guys in the rap group called Cottonmouth Kings. I don't know a whole lot about Cottonmouth Kings, but my perception of them has always been like, they're basically I 
ICP, if ICP was more about smoking weed as opposed to like dressing up as clowns. Mickey Avalon was also signed to this label at one point, that like white party rapper guy from the MySpace era. I don't know if y'all remember him, but yeah, it kind of makes sense that this label Suburban Noise, uh, that Suburban Noise with a Z by the way, would take interest in the young rising stars broken side. So in the fall of 2008, October 21st to be exact, Broken Side released their first proper label debut called the BC-13 EP through Suburban Noise Records. Like I was saying, there was another EP called BC-13, which the band self-released earlier that year, but it had like a different track list. It was a different thing. This BC-13 EP was like the real deal, the big kahuna, the real debut uh, classic from Broken Side. Broken Side was officially in the mother freaking his house, you know what I'm saying? This EP had some minor hits, <laughs> some standout tracks like Schizo and Bree Bree, but the real hit on this EP and the real defining thing that not only put Broken Side on the map, in the music scene, but also opened them up to a whole new world of online hate and ridicule was the song and its accompanying music video, Freaks, and that's Freaks with three X's on the end, just to be clear. So, you know, I mean, y'all know this video. It's absolutely, absurdly ridiculous. They're getting crunk. They're dancing with all these girls. They're screaming in the girls' faces. They're pouring out liquor. There's a guy dancing in a pig costume. I actually learned uh, from the snapshot of their MySpace at this time that the dancing pig is actually their official mascot. And he is, in fact, a crunk pig named Bree. So, you know, Broken Side had their fans at the time who were like, yeah, great video, good work guys, but this video, Freaks, quickly went pretty viral, and this was in the early days of videos going viral, the early days of YouTube in general, so pretty rapidly this music video was being circulated like scene core wildfire, not only throughout fans of Warped Tour music at the time, but also in mainstream media too, and as you could guess, it was going viral for all the wrong reasons. Broken Side quickly beat Nickelback in the late 2000s as the most hated and dunked on band by the masses at large. Uh, articles from real legit publications were coming out left and right covering Broken Side and the new crunk core sound in a negative fashion. NME magazine stating the following in 2009 addressing Broken Side specifically. Quote, I'm not prone to hyperbole so take this as gospel. Even if I caught Prince Harry and Gary Glitter adorned in regalia defecating through my grandmother's letterbox, I would still consider making them listen to this album too severe a punishment. Yeesh. Anonymous commenters on YouTube and MySpace weren't too kind to the New Mexico crunk kings either, leaving comments like these by the thousands online. Just when I think it's impossible to create any worse music-wise. They are not true artists in any sense of the word. Rest in peace, music scene. I'll miss you dearly. This is what happens when terrible people are given too much money and free time. I can't wait for their plane crash. Anytime I feel bad about my musical career, I listen to this. Now I know that my no-talent ass can make it big if these idiots can do it. When I was seven years old, my father began to do terrible things to me. For years, I was convinced that this was the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody, and I attempted to end it all countless times because of it. But in my group therapy last week, someone suggested this video to me. After watching it, I learned that there are far worse things in this world than what happened to me. Thank you, Broken Side. You have given me a new outlook. What happened to me isn't that bad anymore. Now, obviously, that last one is a really terrible comment, but this was literally the length that people were going <laughs> to express their hate and disgust for Broken Side publicly on the internet at the time. Like, they were getting real death threats by the thousands. I wish I was exaggerating. Death threats just for screaming over crunk beats. What, what do you think it is about, like, your music that, that causes that kind of reaction? I just think since it's so new, it, it's either you're like on the bandwagon of, oh, it's Broken Side, so they suck. Or it's just either you just don't like it. 
Yeah, like, you, you mentioned people that you've even gotten death threats. Oh yeah, we get death threats all the time. That's ridiculous. Yeah, we gotta get in a couple of scuffles after shows. Mostly from little kids, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little 12 year old kids. You're not too worried about the 12 no. year old no. kids storming the stage? That's when we tell them, meet us on Call of Duty! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meet us online if you want to kill us. No big deal. So what, do you, what are you guys kind of going for when you're making this music? The main motivation is just to have fun. Yeah, yeah, have fun, enjoy your life. And be who you are and not try to, you know, fit in the scene. Like, everybody's different, so, you know, embrace individuality. Right, That's right. what we're about. It was like them and Attack Attack at the time, the laughing stocks of 2008 and 2009. Attack Attack had a pretty similar response and a similar legacy for their similarly ridiculous metalcore video for the scene core classic hit, Stick Stickly. But much like Crabcore Giants Attack Attack, and that's one exclamation point at the end, the awful hate and ridicule which Broken Side were experiencing was proving one of their catchphrases haters make me famous to be true. That following year in 2009, the boys lived on the road, going on tour with countless prominent artists in the scene like The Ready Set, The Millionaires, Senses Fail and Hollywood Undead, Eyes Set to Kill, Jeffree Star, who mind you, Jeffree Star was opening for Broken Side. Opening! Oh how the turns have tabled! And if you watch live videos, Broken Side were playing for crowds of real people who were really going and crazy, implying that these people were legitimately fans of our crunk core heroes, Broken Side. <laughs> Despite the hate, they were actually getting big. They l even literally performed on the old live MTV program TRL in Times Square on national TV. Utter, utter insanity. Well, they're called Broken Side, and you claim to be uh, the originators of screamo hip hop. So tell us what that is exactly. Um, basically, it's just like hip hop mixed with like some of that screamo flavor. So like we like to call it like crunk core, like just something you can dance to, get crunk to, like have fun to. <laughs> Their core fan base was only strengthening, and this was the time when the crunk core subculture was really at its peak in like summer 2009, I'd say. The crunk kid look became a recognized stereotype in the Warped Tour scene fandom, and dollar store quality broken side ripoffs were also starting to gain traction on MySpace and uh, were starting to get signed and go on tour themselves, like for example, Dot Dot Curve. <laughs> This was the heyday, my friends, the peak of the original crunk core explosion. And it was during the peak of this explosion, June 16th of 2009 to be exact, when Broken Side released their first official full-length record entitled I'm Not a Fan But The Kids Like It, a tongue-in-cheek title poking fun at all the hate which the band had been receiving. So yeah, this album, I mean, yeah, I don't really know what to tell you. I usually do like a review slash analysis section in my videos of the albums that I talk about, but for this one, I mean, it's broken side. Like, it's screaming, crunk beats, auto-tuned T-Pain vocals. It's crunk core. There's really not a whole lot to review or analyze here. I can read you some funny lyrics from it. Yeah, put your mother freaking honkers in the air. Oh yeah, I got my her did nicely. High top Nikes, always in my white tee. Oh god, you know your girlfriend likes me. Beats to make you skeet, making the ladies leak. And legs be wobbling weak, cause Fat Jay's the freak of the week. Leaving the scene addicted to what the dick did. Take a smoke break and get lifted. Shorty been gifted by a veteran crunk kid. And then that's two times. Shorty been gifted by a veteran crunk kid. So yeah, that, I mean, that's basically the gist of this whole album. You get the idea. It sold 6,000 copies in its first week. It got horrible reviews. The band did go on Warp Tour the entirety of that summer of 2009, though, to promote the album, playing on the Skull Candy stage. <laughs> Like I 
Notice that haters were literally making them famous. I mean, playing on the whole Warp Tour that summer, that was big time in the scene at this time. That meant that you were truly on the rise in the scene if you were on, like, the whole Warp Tour, you know what I'm saying? So, freaking get this, y'all. This is how far the hatred towards Broken Side went at the time. There was this freaking website that was made in 2009. It was called mothersagainstbrokenside.net. Protect your teen from their terrible influence. Now, before I go any further, I do have to say this was a fake group. These were <laughs> not actually mothers. Uh, this was not an actual group even. It was definitely some dumb immature haters who were just trying to tarnish Broken Side's name or have a goof at their expense or something like that. This was the image that was portrayed on the homepage of mothersagainstbrokenside.net. Now, I'm going to give you a second to pause this video and read this thing because I'm pretty sure my video would get like demonetized if I read this out loud. So yeah, it's like accusing Broken Side of doing all this terrible, horrible stuff. And Broken Side would be really terrible monsters if they actually did this stuff. But none of this was true. None of the claims on this website were accurate. It was all totally made up. There's zero evidence of Broken Side ever doing any of this stuff. They've denied that any of this stuff was true about them in interviews. Have you heard of an online group called Mothers Against Broken Side? No, never. No, no yeah, yeah, we hear about it every day. You do? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, now, have you ever actually done Show You Cooch, Win a Smooch? Dude, everything on that website is just a straight up lie. We've never said any of those None things. Of that. Nothing at all. all right. But it's funny that. that yeah. There's what else? Yeah, I, I don't know why people would hate <laughs> against you like that, but... I don't know, dude. Just absolute absurdity on all fronts. Once again, the length uh, that people were going to slam Broken Side was impressive and uncharted. This hate was uncharted. No other band or musical act at the time was getting hated on this much and to this extreme. It's crazy. Uh, so, once 2010 rolled around, the group was still touring, and for all intents and purposes, Crunkcore and Broken Side was still alive and well. Kind of. I would definitely consider 2010 to be the last year of real prominence for the, the crunk core genre in its original form. We're going to get to the fall, so to speak, of Broken Side and crunk core in just a moment. But at any rate, in 2010, Broken Side put out their second full-length record called Broken Side Will Never Die on November 9th of that year. Uh, much like the first album, I don't believe it sold all that amazingly. It also got terrible reviews. Musically, it's a lot like their first album. I'd say the only difference is it, it's maybe a little bit further in the crunk party rap direction. There's still plenty of screaming over it, though. It's very much tried and true crunk core. Once again, not really a whole lot here to review or analyze or pick apart on Broken Side Will Never Die. It's more crunk core. You know what crunk core sounds like. Think of crunk core. This album sounds like that. It has that song, uh, Teach Me How to Scream on there. That was kind of a hit. That song kind of goes hard. <laughs> They actually have a song featuring Cottonmouth Kings on this one. Pretty cool, I, I guess. <laughs> There's also like an R&B leaning love song on here called My Girl. A little bit of an expansion there, I suppose. A tender love song from Broken Side. It's not very good, but you know, good for them. So, uh, the real thing fall, so to speak, of the original era of Broken Side and of Crunk Core as a whole really came into play around 2011 or so, I would say. Uh, in this year, Broken Side put out their third album called Guilty Pleasure in November of that year, uh, and they kind of abandoned the whole screaming thing on this one. It's a lot more of just like straight up party rap, more in the vein of, it kind of sounds like a dollar store version of 303. I like to get drunk, I like to get down. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot less screaming on this one. It's almost like they weren't trying to be unapologetically crunkcore scene kids anymore. They were distancing themselves a bit from that on this album and presenting themselves as more of a straight up rap group. And I mean, this album still did not sell very well and also got terrible reviews at the time. Uh, I listened to it in preparation for this video. Uh, it's not very good and it's definitely probably the least iconic of all the old school Broken Side releases. There wasn't really a hit on this album or anything like that. But the fact that they mostly took out the screaming and were starting to go in sort of a different direction is pretty symbolic of uh, what I would consider the death of the heyday of Crunkcore once 2011 came around. For one thing, MySpace was dead once 2011 rolled around. MySpace was integral in the Crunkcore wave. It was like the glue that helped keep Crunkcore bands and their scene kid fans together, and now that was extinct. Also, the initial shock value of Crunkcore, which caused it to get so much attention and also hate two years prior in 2009 had worn off. People just didn't really care much about Crunkcore anymore. It wasn't this, no pun intended, but new hot topic, you know? And the young teenagers who were genuine fans of it were, like, you know, celebrating their 17th birthdays at the time, making them officially too old for this silliness of a music genre. <laughs> You know, Broken Side put out an album with no screaming, Dot Dot Curve also rebranded as more of a stoner rap group, the millionaires kind of disappeared, the whole crunkcore explosion was fizzling out, mostly as a result of the changing of culture around them, uh, but also uh, music this novelty definitely had somewhat of a shelf life, and by the end of 2011, early 2012 or so, Broken Side and crunkcore as a whole kind of went away. It, at that point, it was all but a silly, strange, and kind of embarrassing fever dream of a memory for the majority of people. So, my friends, here's kind of the epilogue of all this. Broken Side are still around to this day. They kind of went away for a little bit around 20. 14 or so, 2013 through 2015, they were kind of out of the game. Fat J left the band. In 2016, get this, they launched an Indiegogo uh, crowdfunding campaign. They were shooting for a goal of, you know, trying to raise $30,000 to help fund uh, the recording of their new record. Uh, <laughs> they put this up in December of 2014. But by the time the funding period ended in February of 2015, the band only managed to raise $1,421, uh, less than 5% of their intended original goal of $30,000, which is peak comedy on all... <laughs> <laughs> on all levels. Uh, but regardless, they did end up releasing another record in 2016 called All Grown Up. They also put out uh, another record in 2018 called Zero to Broken Side, which is a great title. And their new material, it's kind of like more stuff in like the stoner party rap direction and maybe even a little bit more modern well, not really modern anymore, but like trap influence on it, like more hip hop kind of stuff. It's still not really like crunk core screaming type stuff like it used to be, but they're still out there doing their thing. They played some shows recently. It's cool. They're still kind of out there, you know, quietly doing their thing. It's nice. I'm glad that they're still doing it. <laughs> cool thing that has happened with the Broken Side legacy, I kind of hinted at it earlier in this video, is that, yes, uh, in the, you know, explosion of, of uh, you know, MySpace derivative SoundCloud emo rappers in like 2017, 2018 or so, uh, I guess the biggest ones would be like Suicide Boys or Lil Peep or also like trap metal stuff that's gained popularity in recent times like Ghost Mane has been time and time again compared to Crunkcore and to Broken Side and is kind of looked at as like Broken Side and Crunkcore laid the groundwork aesthetically and with the energy of their music and with screaming over over rap beats. You know, it's been said that that's kind of laid the groundwork and was very influential 
influential on the late 2010s emo SoundCloud slash trap metal era, whatever you want to call it. There's a whole bunch of articles about this. Honestly, I'm not really like the best guy to, uh, you know, educate those on the internet about sort of the new era of emo rap and how Broken Side and Crunk Core influenced it, because I just, I don't really listen to a lot of that stuff. I don't even know if Little Peep and Suicide Boys are even the best examples of stuff that Broken Side influenced. There's probably, like I said, there's a bunch of articles about that online, about its surprising influence on the new era. I'm sure there are other YouTubers out there who could explain sort of the, that trajectory and that influence a lot better than I could, because like I said, I just just don't know a lot about emo rap or SoundCloud stuff. I've, li I've listened to some of it, but it, you know, it's n not really my thing, but it's very cool to see that these artists like Broken Side and, 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 you know, Dot Dot Curve, uh, you know, so goofy and critically panned and hated on at the time ended up kind of being revolutionary and, and, you know, really changing the game and, and starting their own genre and laying the groundwork for other new creative genres to exist in the future. I don't think anybody in like 2008 or 2009 had any concept that Broken Side and these crunkcore artists would have real uh, palpable influence on literal mainstream rap 10 years later. And there you have it, my friends. That was the rise and fall, and I guess rise again, of Broken Side and the crunkcore genre. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching the cozy representative. Like I said, please subscribe and hit the notifications if you like this. Um, I hope you all are doing great. I'm going to be doing more videos about like crunkcore artists and stuff and some lesser known crunkcore artists in the coming months. So stay tuned for that. Much love to you all. Have a wonderful uh, rest of your night. Happy fall. It's now October where I am. I'm loving it. I love fall and the cool weather. Anyways, peace out y'all. Have a good day. <laughs>